Welcome back to the Chosen Baseball Journey with Kareem Garcia, former MLB great slugger, Jonathan A. Cohen, author of Bible 3.0, lawyer, Corman's LP. We kind of do it all here. And Kareem, you know, funny, you uh, we always segue in funny, funny ways. You were mentioning off the air about your recent acquisitions. You tell me my family recently acquired a cat, and I said to you, what did you give up to acquire the cat? This is when you know you're a sports fan. And I say this tongue in cheek because when we were finishing off yesterday's uh, episode, uh, sorry, last week's episode, um, I was going to mention that, you know, we're, we're talking about the Yankees, Dodgers, Dodgers winning the World Series in 2024. And part of the funniness, you know, we're looking at the top free agents today from both teams is how those rosters were constructed between the Dodgers and Yankees. And I know you probably noticed this also, but those 2024 Yankee Dodgers, almost exclusively free agents and trade acquisitions, very little players on those rosters from the draft. Are you surprised? Well, no surprise. These guys were trying to load up for this year to win a World Series because they've been lingering around it when the playoff trying to, to get there and they finally did it, now all of a sudden, how much is that going to cost? And, you know, all these other small market teams, you know, like you're wearing the Pirates there, the Rays, uh, they say, you know what, it all has to come from the draft, homegrown talent. Well, apparently acquiring them is the best way to go in some cases. And <laughs> this is the big bucks, the big boys World Series, so to speak, because these were the big spenders, the big market teams. Rob Manfred, when he found out the Yankees and Dodgers are going to the World Series, he must have slept so good that night. He knew the ratings would be good. He knew that oh, internationally with Japan and Otani, this was the dream. The baseball has been dreaming about this since 1981. They finally got their Yankees-Dodgers World Series. Money, 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 money. I know. I know, I know, I know. I mean, the, they, they mentioned a stat, something like 15 million people is watching in Japan right now that the series... Not even because Yamamoto, because Otani. Not even, they not, rem, not even remember Yamamoto. They, they, all they talk about is Otani right now. Otani, Otani stirs the drink, so to speak. He's been unbelievable overall for the Dodgers. And he ain't going anywhere for a while. But there's a few free agents. And I'm not going to talk about the other teams. I want to talk about the Yankees, Dodgers, World, uh, World Series rosters. And I'm going to pick the top five, not in any particular order, where are they going to go? Did they increase their value? Are they coming back? What's going to happen with them? And everything starts and ends with Juan Soto. This year's Otani. This year's Judge. He's making it at his age and his numbers. Juan Soto, based on what he did in the playoffs World Series, did he actually increase his value? Or you think he's still getting the same monster contract regardless? No, I mean, he's going to get a, a, a huge contract. That's regardless, but I think he's going to make more money now because of the playoff that he's having right now. So he's been hitting good. He's been consistent. He's been on base. He's not striking out. He's getting the walks. He's hitting the home runs. He showed it with the, with the Cleveland Indians to hit the home run to to go to the World Series because they were they were behind. He hit the, the three-run shot over there, got the outs. They're coming to the World Series, so that, that all helps. If Juan Soto... It's like Aaron Judge in the World Series. If that would have happened, how much would that have affected his market, do you feel, as a free agent? Would that have made a much lesser contract and changed where he goes? I would have think he would have had the same impact as before that he was playing on the playoff. I think right now he increased the value of his contract because of the way that he's playing. But if he wouldn't, if he would have hit like Judge, he would have get the 500 Five hundred and fifty uh, million dollars. I think he's going right now for the six six thirty. That's what I'm looking at. The fact that the Yankees came so close yet so far, in your estimation, is he still coming back to the Yankees or is he going somewhere else? I think he loves New York. I think that uh, his first choice is going to be the New York Yankees. After that, is whoever puts up the uh, the biggest contract for him to make it to the World Series. Well, conversations from what I'm hearing on the street, Yankees, Mets, Nationals, Padres, 
Blue Jays that they're gonna prepare this monster again. You know, after the Otani fiasco, that Juan Soto is gonna go to Toronto ain't gonna happen. By the way, and I live in Toronto. The mystery team, it's funny, they're saying is he loved seeing so much what happened with L.A. that he will consider the Dodgers, except is he more of an East Coast guy? He seems to enjoy it more on the East Coast. Any chance he's going to the Dodgers? I mean, if if anyone can pay the huge contract, is the Dodgers. You know, and acquire him to, to play right field. It will, uh, it will send back Mookie Betts probably to a different position you know, Mookie can play center field, can play second base, can play shortstop. I mean, give a little more rest to, to Mookie and 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 less strain on his arm. Maybe second base, maybe a little bit of shortstop, a little bit of center field. It gives you more flexibility. And I mean, I, I don't see it as crazy as people will think Juan Soto signing with the Dodgers if he's not with the Yankees. Any chance in your world that Juan Soto is going to get signed by the Jays? None. <laughs> Sorry. No chance. I'm not running them. So and trust me, <laughs> they I've been reading in the papers here in Toronto. They're saying, you know, the most unpopular managers, GMs, you know, in the history of this, uh, organ- of this organization and then of the city of the different sports teams. I don't think I've ever seen Toronto have less confidence in management. They do in the Toronto GM and president right now. You know, the stadium is looking great, but the way they promised that team, uh, we'll get to him, but uh, I think that we're going to call it the Teoscar Hernandez curse. That's what I'm going to term it right now. Losing Teoscar Hernandez when they did, big, big, big mistake. So uh, if we're going to do our crystal ball, Juan Soto, where is he landing? I, I still want to believe that he's going to stay with the Yankees. That the Yankees are going to do everything that's possible to keep him in New York and the Bronx. And I'm in full agreement. There's again something I, I I having been to the stadium and being in the city and knowing the folklore, something special about wearing those pinstripes. He got to play it, it with them, play in the playoffs, experience World Series with the Yankees. I think he's gonna want to win that World Series in New York with the Yankees. I don't see Juan Soto going anywhere but the Yankees. I think that's a done deal. Moving on, we're going to do the Yankees first. And coming in at number two is our good friend Alex Verdugo. Verdugo, uh, Yankees fans, let's not forget, uh, a little bit after the All-Star break, he was hitting cleanup at one point. He was that good. And then uh, the batting gloves, batting gloves caused those issues with his uh, hitting. Then he changed the batting gloves, learned to hit again for a little bit, and then went away the hitting. And then in the World Series, he's been pretty steady. His glove has been great. Uh, any world where Alex Verdugo goes back with the Yankees in 2025? I see it very difficult. I think that the, the Yankees are going to go and, and, get, and get somebody else for Verdugo. Here, let's let's pause here for one second. Just uh, your video came out for a sec. One sec. Yeah, it's kind of coming in, out, and out for a sec. There we go. Okay. Here, so I'm, we're going to delete that and we'll do it again. So Alex Verdugo, oh, so Alex Verdugo returned to the Yankees. Is there any world that that happens? No, I, I don't see it uh, uh, coming back to the to the Yankees. I think the Yankees are going to go get somebody else to play for them in left field. Where do you see Verdugo headed? He probably go back to the uh, West Coast and uh, in none. Is gonna be on San Diego or any of those teams. I think he might end up going with like Pittsburgh or something like that. Central. I don't see him coming to to any of those teams. I mean, I could see Pittsburgh. I could see the Rays coming in on him. The Brewers would be an interesting fit. The Jays. I mean, there's a lot of teams that could use his glove, knowing they could all think you know. They, everybody thinks they have the secret sauce watching him. They know he's been able to do it in the past. I can tweak that swing and I can bring those 30 home runs out of him because you know the talent's there, right? Um, Is he going to get a one-year pillow contract? Is he going to take a two-year, three-year deal with uh, vesting options? Where do you see it going for Verdugo? I see him going on a one-year deal with a mutual option. One year with a mutual, yeah. 
Verdugo probably going to get a year, maybe a vesting option. Yes, that is correct. That's what I see him. And, uh, you know, he has to play the year. Don't get hurt for him to get actually a two, three year deal with somebody else. You know, uh, he is a, he's a great hitter. You know, it's, it's not the same playing in New York, playing in Boston, the playing in Pittsburgh, playing in Colorado, playing in other teams that, the market is a little bit different. Well, my teams are Pittsburgh, Milwaukee, the Rays, and my crystal ball is telling me it's going to be the Rays because now he has a vendetta against the Red Sox and the Yankees, so he wants to play against them often and burn them a lot. So I'm going to go with the Rays on this one. So he's going to play the whole East uh, East Division, huh? He's going to just go down the, the, the whole thing. <laughs> so he can find his way to Toronto, for sure. Exactly. I, I just saw good things happening for him. He, there was so much potential this year. Things were so great. And that's the frustrating part, because it was not really injuries. We're not going to go into the whole batting gloves thing. But Verdugo, you could see the talents there. You know, people want to love to hate him and all this. and his attitude. But when you have him as a teammate, and he's fighting for you, he's a little cocky, but he plays hard. The reality is, you know, you think about it, it's not that much different than Trevor Bauer cockiness out there. And Bauer, I would say, talent-wise, as a pitcher, off the charts, it's it still shocks me a bit that Domingo Herman will get a contract and Verdugo's going to get a contract, you know, and Bauer will not. Uh, I'm still mystified. I, I can't get past this. Yeah, unfortunately, that's the way sometimes baseball works. You know, uh, you're not supposed to like uh, blackball a guy, you know, and and talk to the artists to let him know they don't sign him anymore. But you know, they say that doesn't happen, but that's happened. We can agree. If Trevor Bauer does not pitch in 2025 Major League Baseball, he ain't coming back, is he? Unfortunately, he won't. He won't come back. You know, you can see it. He got a great year with uh, Mexico City Red Devils. They won the championship. It's a guy that you can use in uh, the end of August, at the beginning of September, given the opportunity, and nobody even thought about it. Where is Trevor Bauer going to pitch in 2025? Either Japan or Mexico, whatever he f feels like it, you know, at this point. Shame, shame, shame. That's all I got to say. Watching that World Series we talked about in the other episode, you know, uh, versus pitching bullpen games. I'd rather have Bauer there giving me seven innings, one, two runs, and 10 strikeouts. But, hey, that's just me. Clay Holmes, you know, from a guy who saved a ton of games to the Yankees, led the league in blown saves, uh, did not trust him at all in the playoffs. So up and down. It's a guy that you so much promise was coming out of it that he turned a corner with the Yanks, then fell back and came again. Where do you see him going in free agency? Is there a world he comes back to the Yankees? Not at all. I don't think he's coming back at all. Not even a setup, not even a, a, anything like that. You know, he shows that uh, when the pressure is is there, it's, it's not able to handle it, especially in New York. And you know how the the Yankees or the Mets are when you when you fail, they let you know, and only the pressure is going to build even more towards you. Were you predicting uh, our good friend Mr. Clay Holmes is going to end up? He's, he's probably going to get a good opportunity, maybe go to uh, Washington or go to any other team that that has the, the problems right now with, with, the, with the closer because he's, he won't be the closer. He will be a setup man, probably. Josh Hader, good good pitcher, good closer? I like jo uh, Josh Hader, you know, uh, but coming to the Yankees... Uh... But just in general, you like Josh Hader, like good yes, pitcher with a lot of talent? Yes, 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 yes. It Devin does. Williams, great pitcher, good closer. Mm -hmm. Carlos Estevez in the, 2024, the... good pitcher, great closer, right? <laughs> what do those three guys have in common? What's that? They had Steve Carsey as a bullpen. Coach. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before yeah. <laughs> the Angels, yes. That's right. So if I'm Clay Holmes, I'm getting my agent to call the Angels and talk to the bullpen whisperer, Steve Carsey, I'm going to tell you, Clay Holmes, 30, 40 saves with Steve guaranteed. So uh, if I am Clay Holmes, I'm thinking non-contending team, a team that will give me the opportunity to play at the closer position if possible. 
I'm thinking not the Phillies, not the Orioles. Uh, back to not the Rays. <laughs> Where? Cleveland, no Cleveland. Not Cleveland. I'm thinking Angels. I'm thinking Rays, maybe. Nationals, you said. Some somewhere where you can compete for a spot. I would say less leverage at this point. Uh, but it comes down to it. What is it for a guy like Holmes? What is more important? Do I want a guaranteed, almost guaranteed closing job, or do I want the most years, most money? As uh, for his ego, probably the the guarantee as a closer than the most years, more money. Because if he comes back, and that's what he's supposed to do, he eventually gonna get the contract that he was looking for. I'm him. At his age and given the, the history, I'm taking the money in a second. <laughs> Whoever's going to pay me the most at that point, because it's very different to take a one year. For example, the Dodgers call and say, Clay, we just won the World Series. We'll give you one year, two million with some incentives. Okay. The Rays call, we'll give you three years, 17 million. I'll take the three years right away. That's right. But. Yeah. Be interesting to see where the chips fall for him. Uh, I think he will get, obviously, he's going to get the one-year deal. I think Holmes is going to sign for at least two years, maybe an option year, something along those lines. I think he'll get at least a, a two-year deal out of this, in, in my estimation. But stranger yeah, I mean, things. See what happened to our oldest Chapman, too, you know? He bounced around a little bit with some of the teams, and the guy was throwing 103, 106 miles per hour. At one point, he was probably the best closer and all of a sudden, he lost it after he gave up the home run against Altuve, you know, uh, to go to the World Series and other little hiccups that he, he had during his career. And, you know, that that's why he went up and down all over the place, too. If you're a major league team right now and you have to give a roster spot, same money, would you rather have a role as Chapman or Trevor Bauer? Bauer, probably, for the age. And... Versatility, he can probably start and close. Well, depends if you what, what are you looking for. I, I just think, you know, I look at the two and I given their histories and everything else, I'd rather have Bauer over Chapman in a second. But baseball is a funny, funny game. When you when you're a lefty throwing a hundred, uh, people look at you a little differently, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh guy number four on this, and uh, one of the top starting pitchers on the market. Guy that perplexes me a lot. I don't know what to do with this guy. Jack Flaherty. Jack Flaherty. Very good. Injured prone. Occasional blip games. What do you see in his pitching future? All I can tell you is I see big money coming. I see a guy's very inconsistent. You know, I mean, he got the, the ball in the first game of the World Series. But um, I don't know. Again, I mean, you, you sign it to a... A four-year, five-year deal. I don't know if you even go that far. You have to put some options in there. You have to put some little things into the contract in case you get hurt because, like you mentioned, it's uh, inconsistent through the year, and, and you never know what, what you're going to get. How many years, how many dollars for him? I want to say five years tops, you know. Very optimistic. I My crystal ball is telling me three years. Three? Yeah, I thought you were like 60 million, three years. Three years, 50 million is the most I'm, I'm prepared to go. That's where I see it going. And I think it's going to be a giant, giant overpay. It's not going to be the Twins because they've been burned like this so many times, but I feel like a Twins type team, uh, I, I could tell you who it's going to be. It's going to be the Rockies. The Rockies always need pitching. They love overpaying. And I think that he's going to go where the big money is for him. And I think it's going to be three years, 50. I know he'd love to stay in L.A., but if I'm the Dodgers and I got all these guys on the payroll, plus I got to add Soto to my payroll, don't think it's going to happen. I think if he comes back to the Dodgers, it's going to be a one- or two-year deal with less money. I think he'll take the big years and the big bucks, three years, 50 million Rockies. Yeah, uh, I mean, the, Roger, the the Rockies are not overpaying. They have to pay for, for pitchers to come to their place because, you know, their ERA is going to be always high. High fours, you know, mid fives because that's the way the park is you know unfortunately for them but that's the way that they have to pay and no oh, i mean I, I was thinking about 63 year but i went five years very optimistic someone that really need them and and they say oh like you say carson can get him over here and and we're gonna get him five years 
85 million dollars is going to be our best arizona i mean they they signed montgomery and you you hear what the owner said the worst yeah. signing i'd rather have montgomery over flaherty personally i like montgomery but uh we'll, we'll see time will tell it's funny though you know a guy like flaherty with his numbers and a lot of injuries inconsistencies this is a guy that'd be two years you know, 10 million, 12 million, you know, and that was in the concern. That's still good money, right? I'm talking money, yeah. three years, 50 million. That's a five zero. That's a lot of money, man. That's a lot of money for three years, 50 million. I should be getting an ace who guarantees me 15 wins. Jack Flaherty ain't that. Yeah. You get him 16.6 a year. Well, that's a lot of money. Well, I saved you the best for last and you knew this guy was coming and this is going to be been watching him all year. I picked him up on one of my fantasy teams in the first week. I needed an outfielder who was going to be consistent. I said, this guy's hitting with Otani, with Freeman, with Soto, with Will Smith. The numbers have to be there. He had his best season ever. The Jays are crying every single day since they lost this guy. He revitalized himself in LA, which is not a hitter's park. He's getting big, big bucks. He is the one and only. The Oscar Hernandez. Correct. Give that man a prize. To Oscar Hernandez, uh, I was reading about after game three, by the way, uh, that play at the plate to throw out Stanton, not too shabby. His base running, pretty solid. He's a very sneaky five-tool player. Did you know that? No, I mean, I, I know that he threw a 94 miles per hour fastball from left field to get a uh, Stanton in home plate. I, I saw the throw. Uh, I heard the commentary and everything else, but the guy, I mean, it's like you mentioned, a fight tool player that nobody talks about. Very, very underrated. Think about how smart the Jays were to acquire from the, from the Houston Astros back in the day mm -hmm. and how bad things went after they lost him. And he wasn't even that bad on the Mariners. For some reason, when you go to Seattle, you stop hitting. Like, they can, nobody hits on that team. It's freaking scary, actually. But the Oscar Hernandez took the pillow contract, went to the Dodgers, did everything humanly possible. He is cashing in big time. We're talking about five-year contracts. All righty. Yankees. Five years, minimum, minimum $100 million deal. The Oscar Hernandez, you can mark it down right now. Otherwise, he's taking three years, $100 million. This Anything he's getting, he's getting $100 million. I'm banking on it. I was if you go to a five-year deal guarantee, you will go at a, at a rate of 25 mil a year for 125 for five. And I think that the Yankees will offer him four years, 100 million, to play left field and switch with Verdugo right there. So you're thinking T. Oscar and Soto are going to the Yankees? Well, Soto's already there. They just gotta re-sign him. The Oscar could go there. Do you know what the Oscar Hernandez is to the Blue Jays? What? You know that feeling as a guy, sorry, in the political correctness world, but I will go there anyways. When a guy is dating this lovely woman and they're getting along so well, and everybody thinks they're going to get engaged and get married. And he just, you know, it breaks up with her because, you know what, I'm going to find somebody better, younger, smarter, whatever. And all of a sudden he's like, oh, I lost the one that got away. You know, women, same thing with men or same-sex people that, you know, with their respective partners. But for the Blue Jays, I feel like they said Teoscar was the one that got away. He's the one that we should have kept all this time. We regret this so badly. We'll do anything to get you back, please. I think the Jays are going to overpay by $20 million compared to anybody else, and Teoscar's coming back home to Toronto. I don't see... Uh, why would you get the Oscar back to Toronto or he even wants to go there where they have a lot of right-handed heaters. You know, they need some lefties over there too. Listen, I didn't say there's any logic in Toronto or Ontario or Canada. Logic does not play here. The currency doesn't work for us that way. Okay. So we don't need logic. What they're going to come is they're going to come to Vladdy and they're going to come to Bo and saying, we can bring back the Oscar. What do you think? They're just going to call to Oscar and say, whatever deal you get, just bring it to us and we'll give you 20 million more. We'll call it a day. So I think the Jays are going to overpay. It ain't going to be for Juan Soto. I think it'll be for T Oscar. But here's the funny thing that everybody's planning the Oscar's departure. I think T Oscar really likes it in LA. Does he not? Why would you not? 
I mean, you you live over there in LA. You have uh, all these people coming into the stadium all the time. You're having fun. Full house every single day. 56,000 people watching you. You exceeded the expectations that everybody had. You won the home run derby during the All-Star. You hit over 30 jacks during the year. You know, you almost got 100 RBIs. I mean, what else can you want? Plus, you have a hidden team that they don't expect you to carry the team. You're a piece of the team to continue the legacy that they have. And you get to pay with Freddie Freeman, Mookie Betts, and Shohei Otani, three of the best hitters on the planet ever, and really nice guys. But, you know, nicety and everything else, there can't be unlimited money. Would the Oscar take 20, 30 million less to stay in LA? Yes, he would. I think if he's a smart guy, legacy wise, he will do it. I mean, if you give me a house and then you give me my money, I take I take those 20, 30 million off. Well, you know, all the eyeballs are on you. You think the endorsements would be there potentially also that maybe you can make up the revenue that way. So are we feeling that he's going to come back to LA ultimately? Is that really a potential or you think it'll be yeah. the eggs? Uh, winning the World Series with them is going to give him priority to the Dodgers. You know, the Dodgers are going to be talking to him right away, uh, giving him a contract, giving him some numbers. Um, wine and dine right now that you have the opportunities as you're already there and figure and figure contract-wise with the, with the agent. And the other teams, well, they have to weigh their time. Let's also remember something. If the Dodgers call him or the Rangers call him, there's something called taxes. And I think the tax situation in California ain't so good. So that's something else you'll consider. I, I would think that he would call his agent and say, never mind the taxes. Whatever the top offer is, as long as the Dodgers match it or come close to it, even within 10 mil, I'll stay with LA. Is that fair? Yeah, it is fair. Plus, I mean, you can always defer the money just like Otani did. If you're making so much money and say, you know what, I want to help the team, but I also want to help myself on the longer run. I take a five-year deal instead of 140, give me 110, and I will defer half of the money, and you give it to me after the five years that I finish my contract. That way I help you with the taxes, you can sign somebody else, and we can still work together. If the Dodgers have Alex Verdugo, playing 162 games over to Oscar Hernandez. Do they still make the World Series? Do they still win the World Series? No, 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 not a chance. Not a chance. Here's the thing. I've watched enough Dodgers games, listened to enough interviews. It's pretty clear. I know I know Otani is a world beater, but to Oscar is that kind of dark horse under, you know, you know, thought of, MVP, like he was really, you know, they have a lot of glue guys. You think of Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman and Joey Altani. The Oscar is also an MVP in there. Like he, he was just so consistent for them. He was in there every day. You could count on them. This guy's injured. That guy's injured. This was one of the best acquisitions of 2024. You know, everybody thought about Otani. The Oscar was really good for them as well. And winning the World Series, I think they got to find a way to keep him. So... I'm not shocked if the Oscar is there. Like if he's not at the Yankees and he doesn't come back to Toronto because he loved Toronto. He did love Toronto, by the way. He was very popular here. And mm -hmm. fans still cry about him every single day. But uh, if he's not going to one of those places, Dodgers are not going to surprise me at all. Uh, they paid a lot more for a lot less. Yeah, I mean, they, they have uh, Max Muncy, you know, that he was senior half of the year and still he likes 15, 16 home runs. Uh, Will Smith, the catcher, they just paid him, you know, $110 million for whatever years they sign him. Yeah, I, I think they're going to give him a contract to him for whatever money he deserves. And if they sign the Oscar, I don't, I, I don't see the Dodgers going for Juan Soto. I mean, they're going to give him a, a shot, of course, but what kind of money will they offer? I think they come to him and they just say, listen, point blank, are you prepared to come to the West Coast? Is this something you're interested in? Let's not even waste time. We got other priorities in life. Are you potentially interested? Yes or no? Because it felt like he never felt right on the Padres. Like it never sat well. And part of it is, I just don't, there's rumors he's just not, an, he's not a West Coast guy, right? There are, you've played on both, right? 
Yeah. And did you consider yourself more of a West Coast guy, East Coast guy, or you could just play anywhere, basically? I like more the East Coast, to tell you the truth. Why Even is that? It's a little more cold and everything like that, especially playing in, in the American League. The, I, I feel like the ball carries better in the East Coast than it does on the West Coast, you know, because you're closer to the ocean, stuff like that. People is different from one on the other side. I like, you know, the people in, in uh, New York and the people in when it was the Flushes with the Mets, the people, they know their baseball. I'm not saying that the Yankees, I mean, the, the Dodgers don't know. Is it the, they're more like Hollywood type of people and the other one, they're more into the games. I can tell you, having been to LA and been to New York, been to New York many, many times, there's just a different vibe in New York and yeah. you either get it or you don't get it. And that's why they have that East coast, West coast rappers, you know, battles and everything else. And I'm an East coast guy too. Like I just see myself, it's funny. I love Arizona. I can see myself like being in Arizona, but if I had to say New York or LA, uh, it's New York all day long, but yeah. uh, Hey, you know what? Uh, let's see where it goes. It'll be the Oscar Hernandez to me is the most interesting free agent case. I'm very curious how many years, how much money and where he's going, but we can certainly agree the man is getting paid. It's a three-year contract minimum, hundred plus million guaranteed. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, good luck to Mr. T. Oscar and to these free agents. It'll be very interesting. Uh, uh, hot stove season as we're going to be seeing where all the free agents lie over the coming off season. So we'll be back next week. Next week, uh, Kareem, we're going to talk about a couple of topics. One is uh, your guy Fernando Valenzuela and talk about his legacy. And is Salvador Perez a future Hall of Famer? Stay, stay tuned. Chosen Baseball Journey.